Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Over Analyzes. Today, we are taking another close up look at an element of the storytelling in Kaiju number eight, chapter 34. Now, this was something that immediately caught my eye, but it took me a few readings to actually process what was going on here. Now, the opening scenes of chapter 34 are our beloved quattro of. Uh, I can't remember all their names. It's Reno and Iharu and the really buff ex-military dude and the and the rich boy whose dad makes the suits. They're all sitting around and oh my goodness did I ever feel this scene. They're sitting in the parking lot just drinking water and cooling down after they've clearly been doing some hard physical labor. From their clothes you think it might be just regular physical exercise but from how greasy they are and how dirty they are I'm thinking they were doing basic maintenance on the rigs because in a, in a complex situation where you're out in the field you have to be able to perform emergency repairs so a lot of these uh, uh, agencies will do a lot of cross training so they to make sure that the field agents have the mechanical skills to do what they need to do but they're covered in grease they're dirty they're out here just taking a break among the trucks leaning back against the tires I've been there I've done that park service military if you have a fleet of vehicles you've had times like this and they are just shocked they are shook uh, they're processing what happened. They're processing losing Kafka, who they who they were actually all pretty close with. Uh, these are the four who passed out in the bath with him while while they were talking about Mina, and now they're just processing losing their 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 team mom. Basically, they're, they've lost their mom friend, and Iharu tries to blow it off with some humor. And it just goes over like a lead balloon. Actually, it goes over a lot worse than a lead balloon because I believe the Mythbusters proved that a lead balloon would actually be pretty practical. But anyway, so now my biggest quibble with the Defense Force as an institution. Now, not with how it's written. It's written beautifully and it's written with all of the usual flaws that any large institution has. Was that there really did appear to be a lack of cross-training where you take someone from one division and put them in another division to train them. The Defense Force, at least the third division that we've seen, has seemed to be pretty insular. Everybody's highly specialized. Everybody stays in their lane. Mina has the giant cannon and fires it. And the fact that she even brought in a blade specialist to compliment her was seen as something highly unusual. There's just not a lot of cross-training, and that is what made Kafka so incredibly valuable. He had not gone through the highly specialized force of specializing down until he knows basically everything about nothing. He had been, been out in the world. He'd gotten real-life work experience. Now, this is something that the universities in, in the United States, I don't know about universities elsewhere, but I assume so, are really starting to internalize. Life experience and a generalized practical knowledge are super critical to be able to do your specialized job very well. So that's what, that is what, why I had seen it was so logical for Kafka to be so valuable. And it wasn't just a story device or a plot device that made him so valuable to the team. He brought that generalized knowledge, that generalization into an in incredibly specialized force. And it's just in high risk jobs like this where you absolutely need to get the job done like the military you do get those extreme levels of specialization and every single military all over the world has had to fight that natural tendency to specialize and increase to the generalization of the troops and that's where the cross training comes in so i had been thinking and you know when plotting my analysis in my head that was something i had considered that this lack of cross training but that's not the primary point of what this video is going to be about. So you have all of these guys moping around trying to process what's happened to them, the loss of their mom friend, and they get called in to the captain's office. Now, it's never a good thing in these organizations when you get called into the captain's office. And they're all kind of, of course, panicking. But they get there and they're, tell and they, they're told they're being transferred. And the excuse that Mina uses is a very logical one and actually pretty true. The defense force has become too highly specialized. They need to do cross training to bring all of the rookies up to par. So all of the rookies, not just these four, are going to be basically traded across divisions. All the top rookies are going to be passed around to various divisions. And the third division will get new rookies and, and the third division will send out their rookies. 
And the main excuse is that because of the attack, they're at 75% of functional capacity and it's no longer a good or safe place to train people. Now, you'll notice that in the background, the military guy is looking kind of sketched out. He agrees, but he definitely has some qualms. Ah, why can't I ever remember his name? Anyway, he knows that something else is going on here. It's not just what Mina is saying. Now, Reno might also suspect this, but he seems so absolutely so focused on the actual benefit they'll give to him. This is his time to go out and actually experience firsthand the training that Kafka got, the practical life experience of bumping around from one point to the other and collecting a variety of skills. So that's what the focus of this is. But when you think about it, this is a very, very clever move on the defense force spot, a very Machiavellian calculated move. So the scene, remember, the scene opens with Kafka's four best friends sitting around sulking because they've lost their mom friend. Now, a lot of people have wondered, is there going to be a rescue attempt? Is anybody from the third division going to armor up, put on their six guns and break into the Mar maritime base to rescue Kafka? Now, if that was going to happen, it was going to be these four. Mina is a creature of law and order. She's following the regulations to the law. Hoshina, even more so. No matter how much they care about Kafka, they're going to follow the regulations. They're not going to resort to violence to break him out. K Kikoru, she is also a creature of law and order, very much so, and her father is the committee is the defense force commander she is a creature of the machine so for all again for all that she loves kafka she will at, literally face down the lion in his den to defend kafka but she's not going to go against the regulations if anyone in the entire defense force was going to team up and, and use their power and skills to rescue kafka it was going to be these four but now they are split apart across different divisions. Now they will be training vigorously. Now they have a goal of getting stronger to defend against incoming kaiju. Now the threat that they might band together and rescue Kafka has been completely eliminated. And I'm betting that this, this element of the situation played no small part in the Defense Force's decision to start splitting up the rookie teams and sending them to different bases. But that's probably just an icing on the cake reason. It will keep the four most likely to become a troublemaking team and burst, bust Kafka out of kaiju jail. It will keep them busy, keep them occupied, keep them productive while keeping them loyal to the force. That That's just icing on the cake. The real reason that the kaiju defense force is splitting up all the rookie teams is much darker and much more Machiavellian. Not their reasons for it. Their reasons are perfectly logical and probably even wholesome, but the reason behind why they made that decision. Kafka, what is kaiju number eight? He has a, he is completely undetectable as a kaiju in his human form. You have to know what you're looking for. Nobody who didn't know to be looking for a core would have recognized the core that was hiding his, uh, around his heart. So you, you have one kaiju that can completely disguise itself as a, as a human as far as they're concerned and there's no way to tell he's a kaiju unless he reveals himself willingly like kafka did now kafka was absolutely 100 percent willing to reveal himself but kafka is an exceptional is an exceptional person there could very well be other people in the exact same position as kafka we don't know that kafka is the only transforming kaiju and the defense force base doesn't know it either but they think they can narrow it down to the new batch of recruits. Every single recruit who came in this year has the potential to be a kaiju just as powerful as kaiju number eight and has the greater potential to not belong, be in a human body as honorable as Kafka's. So this splitting up the recruits, it is a defensive measure to defend against the possibility that any number of them might be kaiju. So what they're doing is they're taking these recruits out from the places where they're trusted and more importantly where they're known, where everybody knows their habits and is kind of used to them. They're taking them out and they're shifting them to other units where they can be examined and analyzed by impartial officers. Every single recruit who's being cross-transferred right now is going to be under intense scrutiny to see if they are secretly a kaiju like kaiju number eight and the excuse about needing to use the super recruits to train 
to train them up in the other units, that's it. Again, that's a legitimate reason. And this is just a brilliant move on the writer's part and a brilliant move on the defense force parts. You get every single benefit they mention. The top recruits will get that cross training that is so obviously lacking in the defense force. The various units will have the benefit of getting these highly trained super recruits training with them and driving them forward and inspiring them for the time that they're there. They will be able to determine, or at least they hope, they stand a much better chance of determining if any of the new recruits are kaiju once they're separated from the people who've just grown used to them and put under scrutiny from impartial observers. And most importantly to us poor brokenhearted fans, the four recruits who are most likely to have gone rogue and rescued Kafka are split up so they don't have each other's support. They are utterly focused on their training and they are far away from wherever Kafka is. So that is why that opening that opening set of pages for the for chapter 34 was just brilliant on the creator's part. And I am so looking forward to seeing where they go with this. Do, will they address it or will it just constantly be one of the background bits of world building? And from our also a benefit from our point of view is that we get to see all of the rest of these defense force divisions from the perspective of our beloved characters. Now, here's another thing. This suggests a much longer timeline for Kafka being incarcerated than any of us are quite content with or will be happy with because we're going to see training montages for all four of those characters for Reno, Aiharu, and uh, Hot Military Guy and Hot Rich Boy. Anyway, so that means that Kafka is going to be stuck in the maritime base for a lot longer than any of us are going to be happy with being experimented on and who knows what. Anyway, so if you are looking for something to fill the next seven days before the next chapter comes out, go down to the links below and check out my books, Humans Are Weird, I Have the Data, What Would Our Little Green Friends Think of Us? Learn about it in this short story collection. It can be found on Amazon, on Kobo, Kobo, on Google Play Books, and on at Barnes & Noble. And if you want an author signed copy, you can email me following the instructions on the website, and I will get you an author signed copy. Uh, okay, then... If you want to break your heart and you just don't want to get out of the mindset that Kaiju Number 8 has left you in, you can check out Dying Embers, Dragons, Aliens, and Things That Go Boomp in the Night. Very tragic, very cry. Don't read this on public transportation. Don't read this without tissues handy. And peace out, my wonderful viewers. The book from author Betty Adams, Humans Are Weird, I Have the Data, is a humorous look at human behavior through the eyes of aliens. This book is arranged in separate reports or essays, documenting the experiences with humanity through the lens of the aliens who have to interact with them. This anthology of short stories and vignettes from alien points of view highlights some of humanity's quirks we can all relate to. Author Betty Adams captures how strange and interesting humans can really be. This is a fun collection of stories you will really get a kick out of. Humans Are Weird, I Have the Data from author Betty Adams. Order your copy right now on Amazon.